here's a short little tidbit from my build that I thought I would just kind of capture here. Um, got a lot of the motor in here, and one of the things I have to do is I intake air temperature sensor that you see here. This normally goes into your air box, or if you have an aftermarket um, air filter like I do, this k and filter here, you would drill a hole in it like I used to have it, and your air temperature sensor would screw into the air filter, and you would plug this in. Now, the air temperature sensor is not really that important because when you have a turbo tweak chip like I do, or like most people do, um, I think it only programs at idle or something like that. But the fact is, he overrides this. Um, so while running under like wide open throttle and things like that, I think the air intake sem uh, temperature sensor doesn't really come into play. So that's why like for like two years, I had this thing just kind of hanging in the engine compartment until one day it kind of annoyed me and I finally fixed it and put it in the air filter where it's supposed to be. But it never caused a problem for the car because with the turbo tweak chip, it's not really using this air temperature sensor. I think he programs in some default factors or something like that. But the fact is, um, I have my plenum now that has the air temperature sensor in the side of the plenum. Um, so I need to extend this wire and this plug to go around the back of the motor and into the side of that plenum. Because when I fire this car, I'm going to get a code because this isn't, my air temperature sensor is not plugged into this. So I'm, I'm going to do that right now. This is just a quick thing. wire stripper and I'm going to strip the ends of those two wires two stripped wires so I'll be able to uh, solder into those in a minute I've cut the sensor wire uh, and stripped the ends and when I try to find this appropriate wire to use here to extend this I have a lot of wire hundreds of different spools of different wires for over the years um, so I'm looking for something that's going to work here. It'd be the same. So I'm just going to mic this. I don't know if this is actually really like a appropriate way to do this, but it seems to work for me. So we've got 44 thousandths on the thickness of the wire on the sensor. The first one I pulled out was this blue wire. It looked a little thick, but when I mic'd it, it is 64. So definitely a good bit thicker. The strands are thicker than this uh, sensor wire. I could definitely use this, but I found this one, which seems to be better. When I mic this one, it is 48,000. So it's it's right there. This is about the same as that sensor, so I'm going to end up using this. And there'll be like a loom over it, so you'll never see this white stuff. But So I cut these ends so that they're the same. You can see they're, they're both at the same length. And I'm going to show you just exactly how I do this. This is a super thick 10-gauge audiophile wire. You would use, I guess, to hook up and maybe ground an amplifier or something like that. Why do I have this? Because I need a piece of it. I sliced this open with a razor blade. And I pulled out what I need, which is one strand of this thick brass wire here from this 10 gauge. So both of these wires I've kind of spread open. I'm going to marry them. Okay, so now they're married together flush. I'm going to take this uh, heavy 10 gauge piece and tie them together. So you can see how tightly wound real tight you pull everything real tight so I, I take the 10 gauge wire and I wrapped a, a, a strand of it around my mesh together 
um, two flat wires. So there's no twisting of the wires together and dumping solder on top of it. These things, at this point, if I tape these up, this would never come loose and this would be a great um, you know, conduit for wire here. But we're not done. It's also worth mentioning, which I should have said before, but before you tie these two connections, you have your piece of shrink wrap tube on there. Um, now, because I didn't just take two pieces and wrap them together and make a big knot out of them, I can use a piece of uh, shrink wrap here that's the same size as the wire almost because it's such a smooth transition to be no problem to go right over that. So we're not done here. Do the next step. When I get ready to solder this, you're going to see that everything's going to pull, pull real nicely in between um, that connection I have there. And it's really going to bridge the gap and make it almost look like a nice solid piece of wire. Just for an example, you can see how nice that pulled in there. There's no big mess there. There's no big knot, no ball. Everything is filled in real smooth here, really tying this thing together. That's only half. I have to do the other half still. I'm going to let this cool down for a minute because if I slide the um, shrink wrap over here, if it's real hot, it might start shrinking the wrap before it actually gets to the end, you know, to the end of it. So I'll end up shrinking half of it. I don't want to do that, but you can see how nice and smooth that is. Okay, that cooled down. I can slide this nice and smooth over there. That's a pretty nice um, soldered connection there, and you could swing from that. It's never gonna, um, it's never gonna come apart. It's a nice way to extend the plug. I'm gonna do the other side. I don't think that there's a right and wrong way to do this. There's some ways that I kind of question and go, eh, that's a little sloppy looking. If I was a guy and I took that car apart in the future, I would say, eh, who did this? But other, other than that, I mean, it works. When I was a kid, I used to just twist wires together. I didn't even know how to solder. And sometimes they fell off, but I mean, that was pretty rare. 
But as I got older, I realized there's just different ways to, to do this and how clean that is. You put a nice uh, piece of loom over there, you never even know those two things were even connected. But now I have my wire that I'm gonna take over around the back of the motor. Um, this can get plugged into my IAT sensor. It's tricky, I have to go over to the engine and actually do that same process in the engine compartment on those little short wires. But it's not difficult. It's the same process. It's just a tighter thing, and you've got to be careful around the fender of the car. But, but that's how I solder wires. So this is just a tidbit here.